What's Gucci everybody? In this video we're going to be going over Python Boolean operators. Now in my last video if you guys watched it, which was called Python Intro to Python Selection Statements, I showed you guys what an if statement is and I did something like a equals 3 and then I checked if a was greater than 100. And then I did a semicolon and then I had four spaces to indicate that this statement would be in the if statement and then I printed something out. So I print and in this video, I want to continue our talk about Boolean statements. So, what I really want to touch on is that this greater than symbol is a symbol you can use in, you know, Python programming. It's a way to infer if something's greater than another, and it's a way to compare numbers. Well, another there are also a variety of operators you can use in this situation. So, this is the greater than, um, this is the greater than symbol, so checking if A is greater than 100. There is also the less than symbol, where you're checking if a is less than 100. And if I run if I run these programs, as you can see, I get a print right there, and it's printing out because well, a is less than 100. And so also I can do great I can do greater than or less than as you saw. I can do less than or equals to by having a equal sign right there. And let me just make this 100 just to show you guys. So it's 100. And so it's going to print out because they're equal to each other. But let me make a 101. And since it's it's greater than it by one integer, nothing printed out. So you can all. I also want to note that the equal sign must follow the less than sign. I can also do greater than or equals to, which is the same thing. So this statement will be true because 101 is greater than or equal to 100. And I'll make it 100 just to prove my point that it's the equals to. And I can't flop these as I showed you guys before. I'll just show you guys right here. It's giving me an error right here. It's saying, hey, you can't do that. It expected something else. So I have to have it like this. I can also, I can't do anything like this, by the way. That was just a typo. Um, so I can do so I can do this. Something I can also do besides greater than, less than, and check for equal, equal to. I can also do just blank equality. And the way you do that is with two equal statements. And that is completely different than one equal statement. One equal statement is assigning a variable. Two equal statements checks for equality, and that is very important to understand. So I'm going to run this program and print, print it out because A is equal to 100, and they have to be exactly equal. For instance, I said A is equal to 100, and then I ran it. Um, I'll, print some, I'll print something here just to make sure. We understand that I ran the program because that may not be a little obvious and it may just be blank. So if they were equal to each other, print and then hey would come out. But instead, only print came out, which is kind of sad. So there's the equal to operator, which checks for equality, which is two equals. And then there's the does not equal um, 100 operator. And that checks if the variables do not equal each other. So if I run this program, you know, I have I can set A equal to 100, but then I say if A does not equal 100, print out A. So in this case, you know, A A does equal 100, so I need to set it for, it needs to be something that's not 100 to be equal. So 101 is not equal to 100, and so it does do that print statement. It prints that this is true. And so all these operators I showed you evaluate to, to a action to something called a boolean and a boolean is a variable that can either be true or false so when when someone's talking about boolean they're talking about true or false you know yes and no true or false and so booleans are used whenever you have any of the symbols I just showed you you know the greater than sign the less than sign the does not equal sign the equals to sign the less than or equal to sign or the greater than or equal to sign and I'll just put those in a comment right there. Comments, again, are not evaluated by the computer. It allows you to write anything to um, your assignment. So I can comment, you know, this is an if statement. And it doesn't need to be syntactically correct. And syntactics mean, syntax means that each language, each programming language must fit a certain, must fit certain rules for the computer to be able to evaluate them correctly. And so syntax is kind of like correct punctu punctuation in English for, some, for someone to be able to correctly understand something. But these are all these symbols you can use to evaluate Booleans. And what an if statement is checking, it says, hey, is my is this evaluation giving me true? If so, if it is, evaluate this statement. If it's giving me false, don't evaluate this statement. 
or just go to line 13 right here and continue on with the code. So that's, you know, so that's really powerful. Another, another thing to understand is that Booleans do stand for yes and no, but there's another, a computer also evaluates Booleans in another way besides these statements I showed you. This is the primary way you're going to use them, but another way you can do it is I could just, I could have an if statement and I could say if one, and this kind of doesn't make sense, but I'm going to run this. And what it's going to do is is always going to print out, you know, print because it's a true statement and hey, and the reason because I said this if statement will always evaluate to true, it will always be yes, is because they defined Boolean. Booleans can also be defined as numbers. And the way Booleans are defined is that it, something is true if it's any number but zero and false is zero. So that means negative five will be negative four will be evaluated to true. And there you go. And two will be evaluated to true. And you know, I can say one billion will be evaluated to true. Anything but zero will be evaluated to true. Now, let me put zero here just to show you. So here, if zero will be false, will be evaluated as a false Boolean, and it will be, print will not print out. So that's something to always think about. Now, of course, this is kind of not a good statement because if zero will always evaluate to false, that's that statement will always happen. So there's really no point in having an if block because you, that, that will always execute. But it's just something to know and something to learn about programming is that's the way Booleans work in this language and many other languages. But it's not really good talking about other languages because most people watching this have not learned another language before. So these are the operators you can use together and you can there are ways to combine them um, in a way to make another but I'll have to make another video about that. And note that I can use these operators and I can still use the else operator. So if false, you know, print, I'll print false. And so false will always get printed because if zero is false, so otherwise it's going to print the other statement. So if something's false, you know, this, this is a block, this if else statement comes together. I can't just have an else on its own, you know it needs an if block. It's gonna give me an error here, a red error, and it says all this stuff we're not gonna read. And so if else blocks come together, you can't have an if statement by itself, but you can't have else because else needs an if statement to look at to say, hey, what's the other condition? What's the opposite of the condition I want to handle? That's what the else statement does. So it needs an if block, it needs a reference, it needs to look at what it should be, what it should be um, the opposite of. So there you guys, if you have any comments, you can comment below and I'll try to answer as quickly as possible. And also I'll have a link to my GitHub page and website below. If you want to check out GitHub is where some code examples are located. If you want to check them out, have a great day.